alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to our second episode of our series Islamic Finance, talking about Islamic uh, economics, the concepts of uh, um, uh, economics uh, in uh, Islam, with the company of Sheikh Shadi Asuleiman from Sydney, Australia, researcher in Islamic uh, economics. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, we talked in the first episode uh, about the concepts of Islamic economics, the difference between um, Islamic uh, economy and uh, that in the uh, capitalist or, or Marxist uh, world. Uh, and uh, we had started to talk about um, the importance uh, and the role of values uh, and ethics and morals in uh, financial dealings in our uh, religion. So, uh, Sheikh, what are um, the major uh, important um, values we should all stick to when we deal in financial matters? Yes. Uh, Islam focuses a lot on manners and morals. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I was sent to perfect the noble manners. And when we say manners and morals, that applies to every single dealing in all types of contracts and transactions. And obviously, when we say morals, we're saying about honesty, trustworthiness. And these are very, very important components when you buy and sell. You would always to buy something from someone who's honest, honest with what they sell to you. And you also want to uh, deal with someone who will sell you or buy something from you and give you something that's honest and, uh, or being honest and being trustworthy. And that's why Islam also, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, taught us about our ways that we deal with one another. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Man ghashana falaysa minna. Whoever cheats or deceives is not from us. And that's a very general, very general hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So cheating or deceiving a seller or a buyer in any way or form, it is haram uh, in Islam. Why? Because it's not the ethics or the morals of uh, a good or a good Muslim. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he put certain conditions when it comes to the market or when it comes to buying and selling. And there are those there's conditions that the scholars refer to as qat'i, which there is no room for ishtihad. Mm. And there are other areas which are considered to be dhanni, there is a room for ishtihad. Qat'i means clear or it is very clear from the Quran and Sunnah and dhanni, it is unclear. So there are some principles when it comes to buying and selling. It is very clear that the sharia would not accept, such as honesty. You must be honest when you buy and sell. And uh, Islam gave the khiyar al-bay' or khiyar al-ayb. Khiyar al-ayb means the option that if someone cheats you and gives you something different to what they say, you could return the property back to them. And uh, this is where we come and talk about the components of uh, buying and selling. Uh, the scholars uh, say there are four, most, uh, four important components when for a transaction of buying and selling. There is al-bay' mm. who is the seller, al mushtari who is the buyer. Al Mabir, which is the the property that the buyer is buying and the seller that's selling, and Aqd al Bay'ah. Mm. Aqd al Bay'ah. And these are very, four important components when it comes to transaction. And each one of them, the scholars had put a condition. Mm. So let's talk about each, uh, each one of them um, uh, and the conditions. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, the seller. And let's focus about the seller because usually what happens in today's world uh, is that the consumer is the one that. Um, usually pays the price. And in this world where, where seemingly uh, uh, consumption uh, is everything and nobody thinks about production. But everybody just wants to consume, wants to buy, and nobody wants to produce or wants to work. And yes. definitely things cannot advance uh, this way. Yeah. So, so what about the seller? So, yeah. so uh, a form of cheating would be if I b sell you this product and it is, uh, for instance, uh, made um, in a very small uh, local uh, uh, area and I tell you that this is uh, a brand X or brand Y or it's made from outside the borders in the best uh, place in the world. That's a form of cheating. Yes. Yeah, the buyer and the seller, the buyer and the seller, al-ba'a' wal mushtari, both of them must be honest towards one another. Mm. And must, both of them must be clear must, both of them must how be can clear. the buyer be honest? I mean, we can understand how the seller yeah, can be see, honest. In Islam, in Islam, there's a very important point, and I'm very glad that you brought this up. Hmm. In Islam, uh, when we say property, when we say the mabia, uh, money is a property. Right. See, back then, it's not always that I sell you something and you give me money. I could sell you a car and you give me a horse. Right. I sell you a house and you give me a land. Correct. I sell you, you know, I sell you a, for example, a TV. 
and you give me a mobile phone. So Correct. transaction in the Sharia, it's not necessarily mm. that it's always money, money. Correct. Money is a property. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said al-mabi'ah. Al-mabi'ah in the Sharia is mm. referred to anything that has an Islamic value. Mm. And what does an Islamic value mean? Not every property has an Islamic value. So for example, uh, musical instruments in the Sharia don't have an Islamic value. Which means I can't sell you that, nor they could buy it from me because it does not have an Islamic value. Uh, we have in the West have people take snakes and take mouse, you know, mice. They take them as uh, mm. uh, pets. Mm. And uh, in the Sharia, Islam forbids you, first of all, to take them as a pet and forbids you to buy a snake mm. or sell a snake or I'm buy a mouse or sell a mouse. Uh, even though that some of them cost hundreds of dollars. The reason that this is forbidden is because a snake doesn't have an Islamic value. Understood. Okay. But, but if the buyer is, is paying you money, uh, supposing that the buyer is giving you um, uh, authentic uh, uh, papers, uh, authentic money, then he doesn't have any other responsibility, does he? Yes, and that's why in, when the scholars speak about mm -hmm. when the scholars speak about the conditions of uh, the the mushtari who is uh, buying. Then don't look at him as buying with money because back right. then they did not use right. only money. They'll use, you know, I'll buy a Understood. shirt with Can a Can we house. focus on the seller? Because usually the problem nowadays is with the seller. These uh, days. And we, yeah, yes. And we, uh, we're seeing a lot of practices uh, that uh, um, are strange. What if I'm selling this product A at three times... The, the, the price uh, of um, its cost. Okay. Is that uh, um, halal okay. uh, in Islam? This is what the scholars refer to as al-ghubun. Mm -hmm. Al-ghubun means that you sell something, mm -hmm. you deceive someone by selling them something uh, with the value of it uh, three times or four times. Of course, that's forbidden in Islam. And Islam had given you the right to go and return it back. Mm -hmm. Islam gives you that right because we are allowed to make a profit. No doubt, mm. something is worth hundred dollars. I want to sell it for hundred fifty. Mm. This is murabaha. Mm. I have the right mm. to make a profit. Then what's the point of me buying and selling? Right. But my profit must be reasonable. Mm. Reasonable according to the customs. Right. It goes back to the order of what's reasonable. Uh -huh. Okay, because, because it's relative. I mean, the yeah. word reasonable itself is yeah. relative. And the word reasonable goes back to the order. It goes back to the customs Correct. of the people. So, Correct. for example, I've realized in uh, in some countries that the profit does not exceed fifty percent, mm. and that's reasonable. Mm. And the countries, the profit exceeds three, four hundred percent, and that's reasonable to them. Mm. Okay, but anything beyond that, then that's ghubun. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbid that type of transaction or forbid that type of dealing. And uh, the Sharia ah had given the person who has been deceived with the price to return back that property or take back the extra money they had paid. Right. Well, uh, there is a certain product A. Uh, in uh, a country one, and the same product is there in country two. And that c country two imports it from country one. But the buyer can buy it from th the country of origin. Well, if he buys it from the country of origin, he uh, buys it for one unit. If he buys it in this country uh, that, uh, uh, that imported it, he buys it for five units. Yes. How would this be described? Is this See, fair uh, or reasonable? If I'm, uh, if I'm in that country... If I'm in that country that imported this product and it's a reasonable price with everywhere else. Mm. So, for example, if I go to 10 shops and they all sell at the same price, maybe a bit extra or maybe less, then that's reasonable. Right. But anything beyond that, right. where one shop sells at 100, the other one sells at 1,000, then that's a big problem. So there is no problem if, uh, if there, are, there is a big gap between the prices of a certain uh, item between those two uh, countries. countries. Now, there's no problem. Because as, long because as, as a merchant working, in, as a trader working in this uh, um, uh, stock or item, uh, I could be making 1,000% uh, uh, profit. As long as in my local area, this is the price of it mm -hmm. and it's acceptable, mm -hmm. then it's so all right. So that's the parameter. Yeah, this is, it goes back to the alpha, it goes back to the customs mm -hmm. and goes back to how much is that worth everywhere else okay in the same country I, i'm selling this product um, at a very uh, high cost because it is in a luxurious shop but if you buy it the same thing uh, in an ordinary common area you'll buy it for much less money there's no problem in that for See, the seller okay if i as a buyer know right. this it's okay hmm. if me as a buyer see because the Huban, I made the the, the, the Huban, choice the Huban, uh, yes hmm. but the Huban is that when I'm, I'm, i've been i've been uh, I, I bought something that uh, I thought this is the value of it and then someone else 
uh, I realize it's a lot more cheaper. I've been deceived. Mm. But if I know, like, you know, you buy it in this area for 100, but another area is 50. Mm. Well, I know. I haven't been deceived because mm. I know. Mm. Deception is when you don't know. Mm. If I sell you my used car and I don't tell you about all the faults, uh, the faults then th this is uh, uh, haram. Yeah. I have to tell you the faults that I know. Mm. The faults Correct. that I know. Because Correct. in the car there's probably faults I don't know. Probably. So my duty is mm. like, I have to tell you what I'd like to hear. If I'm coming to you and uh, you are selling me the car, imagine that it's the opposite. What I'd, what I'd like to hear, I should say. So if there are faults that I know in a car, I have to mention them. Mm. The major faults. And uh, it's better morals to say even the minor faults. But what you know, of course. Okay. I have a house in, in a certain neighborhood where the average price is one unit. I know that I want to sell my, my house for one unit or for 1.1. But I'm very fortunate, so I get a buyer from somewhere uh, out of the blues, and he comes and tells me I'm going to buy it for two. Is that okay for me if as a seller? Knows, if he knows that uh, this is the, pr if he knows that uh, the price of it is that much and everyone else is that much, but from his own he wants to give you more, then it's up to him. As long so, as so if he doesn't know, I have to tell him, look out, uh, all the, this neighborhood, uh, uh, you know, is priced this way. So, so I would have to tell him as a seller then, because h how would I know that he knows? See, it's, see well, if there's two things. It works two ways. First mm. of all, when I buy something, I should be also cautious what I buy and at least Correct. go around. You know, they say... Correct, in, but I'm asking from the point of view of the seller here, okay. because it happens. It does happen a lot. Y you know, you have a certain item, you know it's just worth one pound, but somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm going to buy it for two. Yeah, so do you have to tell him, by the way, you can get it for, for, for one if you if really you care about it this much? I'm going to give it uh, to you for one and a half. Yeah, you, you've offered him one pound and he said, I'll give it to, to you. That, that's from his own will. Mm. He's, given you, he's given you the extra. That's mm. from his own will. The extra could be considered as a present. I'm as trying to focus on samaha in yeah. selling and buying. And tolerance. Tolerance in, in selling and buying. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to be um, void these days. Yeah, so it's void because our relationships between one another is based on, uh, is based on materials. It's no longer based on brotherhood. It's no longer based on uh, uh, fillah, brotherhood for the sake of Allah and uh, re loving one another for the sake of Allah. It's all based about materials. And this is, the, this is how you see the Western life now. It's just mm. materials that even between the son and the, the mm. children and their parents is based on materials. Mm. Where Islam, in the relationship between people is not based on materials. Indeed. It's not based on uh, money. It's not based on properties. It's based on uh, the best of uh, manners and based on morals and based on ethics. And, uh, and, and that's why uh, Islam uh, teaches us and tells us to be honest in all our dealings, in everything that we deal with. You know, whether it's not buying or selling, yeah. you know, not only money, but in every, in every aspect in our lives. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad said the yes, honest, yes, the honest tajir, the honest merchant is with the prophets and the honest people and the martyrs. So, you know, like, look at this beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which will encourage someone who is in the business to be honest. Why? Because there is, there is, you know, there is, uh, there we is, hope it does. Yeah, there is uh, something uh, uh, connected with Allah Azza wa We hope it does. Uh, on this note, Sheikh, uh, we'll, we'll take a break. Uh, dear viewers, do stay with us. We'll be back for the second part of uh, our program in a very short while. Assalamu Back to the Prophet. Join Sheikh Amar in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that Quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. So welcome back. 
Um, Sheikh Suleiman, before the break, uh, we were talking about um, the components of the financial transaction. Uh, you talked to us about the, the seller um, and the buyer and their duties. Now, what about uh, the restrictions um, um, or the characteristics of uh, the two other uh, components, mm. and that's the contract and the property itself? Yeah. Before we get onto that, but between the buyer and the seller, there's also other conditions that the scholars lay down. Amongst those conditions that the buyer and the seller must be mature, some of them put the condition as they have to be over the age of puberty. And uh, the reason they put that is because someone under the age of puberty maybe doesn't know what they're buying and selling, and maybe they buy something that they should not be buying or selling. But the majority of them, they go with the opinion. They say as long as they are they're in the age of discrimination. Right. So the buyer and the seller right. must be over the age of seven, right. in which they know what they bought and what they right. sold. Because if you give a child that's uh, give him a hundred dollars and then he goes that's and buys correct. lollies with it, that's correct. You know, but but, but I can give my six-year-old son f uh, one pound and tell him uh, I'm waiting for the car outside. Go in and buy this, and the guy is going to give you that. Yeah. And see, that's where the scholars say, with the permission of the guardian, it's okay. Right. But, uh, you know, for example, my son, when I give him $50, he rejects it. He takes the $1 coin, <laughs> you know, because they don't <laughs> understand true. the value of it. Correct. And that's why the scholars do not accept the transaction of a little kid, because of, they, of are, if they, are, they are liable to fall into something wrong. He'll go right. and buy a lolly for $100. Right. And that's why the scholars say, okay... But, but the way the, the financial, uh, global financial system was derived made everybody uh, buy lollipops in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the past uh, yeah, yeah. years uh, before the, the, yeah. the meltdown. And yeah. and the, the world yeah. is trying to recover now, and let's yes. hope it does. Yeah, that's why the reason but is... But on the right track, and uh, yeah. the Islamic yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, way that, 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 you know, that refuses these risks, refuses yeah. these leverages, yeah. refuses yeah. That's these why virtual it's derivatives. Risk. It's a risk that when a child or a young child buys something, because what happens if my son is going to come back with a lolly and I'm going to say to him, how much you buy that? He said, I bought it for $50. What's going to happen? There's going to be a dispute between me and the seller. Mm. And that's what Islam says, okay, from the beginning. Yeah. Do not accept a transaction of a child that's under the age of discrimination. Right. Because okay. you said that you know, preventing a dispute is one of the key rules. One of the uh, major reasons. Rules. One of the key mm. roles of the Islamic Sharia or the Islamic uh, principles when it comes to buying and selling is to avoid any sort of, di any sort of dispute and conflict. Mm. Okay. And that's why the scholars say the condition on the buyer and the seller that they must be over the age of discrimination. Mm. The other condition, they must be sane. Mm. So if someone who's insane... Again, like a, like a little child, go and buy something with a dollar, it gives a, uh, pays $100, and that's not accepted. Right. And that's why if something like that falls, I could go to the seller and say, look, the transaction that took place between uh, you and my little son, it was, it, was, it was incorrect. And I want you to give, him, give me the $100 back or give me what's worth, uh, or take what uh, the lolly is worth and give me the rest. That's how the Sharia works. Right. Uh, so these are the conditions. And the other conditions that uh, they must be honest. Of course, uh, honesty is a moral uh, within the buyer and the seller that th they must have these characteristics not to be cheaters or not to deceive or not to say something which is lying. Can I ask one question before we go into the last two components? And mm -hmm. it, it is again about the relationship between the buyer and the seller. I'm buying this product from this place and I know that this merchant or these merchants have agreed together to fix the price of the very urgent and um, important um, commodities we all monopolize need. yes okay and 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 we are forced as consumers to buy to buy so this and is we do is, is this halal of course uh, from not. the part of, uh, of from the view not. of the monopoly in islam is not accept accepted mm. and that's where the government or the islamic state interferes but and sometimes it is the government that monopolizes. This is where you find that this is the wrong again. It's wrong from the government. But in an Islamic uh, state where we follow Islamic principles, if such dealing will take place, the Islamic state or the Khalifa or the Muslim judge will force. But they can merchants. tell you it's not a monopoly. We, we're only doing this in, in this area. You can go out uh, and buy it from another No, it's no, still place. not acceptable. It's still a monopoly. Not a, no, it's still a monopoly. That's so so any agreement like that, you know, to fix a certain price is forbidden. A so. certain price that's... Uh, yes, th that's above the fair value. That's above the, the fair value. Uh, and monopolize and take mm. advantage of people. Mm. Taking advantage of people is rejected in Islam in any way or form. Mm. Mm. We cannot take advantage la of people. La darara wa la darara. La darara wa la darara. You cannot bring harm to yourself, now you could bring harm to others. 
And that's why riba is rejected in Islam because you take advantage of someone who is in the need. The borrower, yes. Yeah. So these are, these, are, these are the things that Islam rejects. We cannot take advantage of the situation to start you know, dictating people. Mm. And if such a, a market... Sometimes it happens in such key commodities as medicaments. Right. But if, if there's a group of merchants who wants to monopolize the market, then the, that's where the Islamic State interferes and says, hold on a sec, you can't, you know, go, you know, you can't go beyond these prices. And this is the rights of the Islamic uh, Khalifa or the Islamic judge. And that's why earlier when we spoke about that Islam looks at the interest of the public and the interest of the individual. And, and if this they is clash, the it's the public. Uh, and if the principle says that if there's a clash between the individual mm. and the public, then the interest of the public always comes before that. Yeah. And this is where we look at that. If that's, you know, there's a clash here between the public and the individual. And that's why the public comes before then. Uh, speaking about the other conditions, which is the property that we buy or sell. As we mentioned that the Islamic uh, uh, property, when we buy and sell, doesn't have to be that I'm buying money or I'm selling money. It could be you know, a house with a car, a car with a you know, mobile. It could be that I'm selling a garment with food. It could be that I'm selling that. So these are the things that we buy and sell with. And this is where we say... That's a trade. That's, that's a trade. trade. This is exactly, that's what we refer to as trade, which is al-bayah. Wa ahallallahu al-bayah. And Allah Azza wa Jalla permitted trade. And back then, it wasn't only that they used to trade with uh, money, but they used to trade with a lot of things. Someone, gold or silver. You know, or yeah, gold and silver. Or someone buys food with a garment, or someone right. buys uh, uh, a shield with a horse. Mm. So this is something we need to clear because the Sharia speaks about that in general. Mm. See, what we buy and sell must have an Islamic value. Okay, not a value, but an Islamic value. Because there's a lot of things have value, but the Sharia does not consider it as a value. So for example, musical instruments. A musical instrument could exceed maybe $50,000. It's got a value, but in the Sharia, it doesn't have a value. You know, Sheikh, when you just you were mentioning that, and uh, I couldn't help but remember the oil for food, oil for food program. <laughs> when you said you, you get this for that, so and, and in today's world, you ha you have a, a leading country that's dominating the world. It hits that country, then it takes its oil and. <laughs> It, it gives, gives it food, food although that, that sovereign country had its own food. Yes. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, uh, so uh, the property is that uh, uh, the, the, the whatever I want to buy or sell with, which is the property, the commodity, uh, this must have an Islamic value. Mm. Okay, so not a value, an Islamic value, because there's a lot of things, as we mentioned, have values, but they do not have an Islamic value. That's why you cannot buy or sell with it. Mm. Okay, so for example, alcohol. We know that in the West, you know, a bottle of alcohol or wine could exceed $10,000 sometimes. Can I go and use, can I come up to you and say, look, I sell you this bottle of alcohol to buy your car? This alcohol bottle of alcohol is worth ten thousand dollars. Your car is worth ten thousand dollars. Can I sell you this bottle you of can't alcohol? can't because alcohol is haram. Uh, so it's got a value, mm. but in the Sharia, it's got a, it doesn't have an Islamic value. Why? Mm. Because it's haram. Mm. That's why whatever I buy and sell must have an Islamic value. A very common question I get: Sheikh, can I have a snake as a pet? Mm. Can, okay. Of course, having it as a pet is wrong. You can't. But at the same time, people can buy a snake for hundreds of dollars. That's not acceptable. You can't buy a snake for hundreds of dollars. So yeah. the trade or the exchange um, um, uh, in property A for property B uh, has to, to have be an two Islamic, halal, Islamic uh, value. Properties. Not a value, but must have an Islamic value. Or else the ownership of the money or the ownership of the property does not transfer. We're almost out of time and we still have the uh, one component left, the contract. Okay, the contract. The contract is when we sell and buy. Okay, what's the contract, okay? The contract is the actual contract of the buying and the selling. What's the reason that I want to transfer this to you and you want to transfer it to me? Is the actual contract. And obviously in the past, the scholars, some of the scholars, especially in the Shafi'i Madhab, they were so strict that when I saw you something, I must say, Bi'atuka, I sold you this. And when you buy off it's me, like say... It's like the Wajtuka. Yeah, like, like exactly yeah, the so contract of yeah, the marriage. And, the, yeah. and, the, and the, the, the Shafi'i scholars are very strict on that, so they could make sure that things are very clear. Mm. Where these days, you just go to buy something and just pay the money without even talking to right. the person behind the counter. That's true. You know, and, the, and the, that's, this is the contract. The contract must be clear, of course, and we, we, the, the contract must be clear, and what's been sold and what's been bought must be clear. And that highlights so, how Imam Shafi'i uh, 
uh, saw um, the importance of financial uh, dealings, of, to of, be of, very of transactions and of trade. Again, one of the major, major principles in the Sharia when it comes to trade, that things must be clear. And it is, isn't it unfortunately, uh, Sheikh Shadi, that in, in today's materialistic wor uh, world, that most of the kabair come due to financial disputes? Of course, because there's a lot of haram that falls into uh, uh, tra trade transactions. There's a lot of wrong things fall into it. And not only that, enmity and hostility comes because of uh, buying and selling. And the zulum, you know, oppression comes from behind buying and selling. So, you know, at the trade in the, in the principle of Islam is not a little thing. It's a, a great thing. It's a great thing in the Sharia. Because because of that, you know, a war breaks between countries. Indeed. Because of that, tribes fight one another. Mm -hmm. So the Sharia makes from the beginning, says, okay, be clear from the beginning. Or don't buy and sell. You'd rather be clear with one another, but the, or else don't go ahead with the contract. Indeed. Um, on this note, uh, Sheikh Shadi Suleiman um, uh, from Sydney, Australia, researcher in the world of Islamic economics. Uh, thank you very much, and we, we hope to see you uh, very soon, inshallah, in our upcoming episode of uh, Islamic Finance. And dear viewers, uh, do stay uh, with us uh, in this series on Huda TV. We'll be talking much more uh, about the world of Islamic uh, economics um, in a world, really, where uh, Islamic banking, Islamic finances uh, proved its worthiness. Uh, in the face of a huge uh, financial uh, meltdown that saw the bankruptcy uh, of uh, those uh, who took too much risk, too much leverage, and uh, used virtual derivatives and used uh, just everything that's for basically forbidden in uh, our great religion. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.